How we doing lads? Uh, back at my heat exchanger again and uh, from editing the video the other night uh, it became blatantly obvious, I can't believe it and think for was doing it that uh, the obvious next thing to do with this is completely bypass this hole putting the air from the heater straight into the heat exchanger and just leave this guy work as he was designed to blow that output air goes straight into the house so then this is just the secondary part where we just have the exhaust into the heater and just simply put a fan on that, 12 volt fan and have this as a completely separate unit like so all we're taking from the heater unit is just simply the exhaust pipe to heat this chamber and blow a second set in maybe have two outputs, you know, we'll have two streams of hot air, one from here, one from here and then just join the two and put them into the house into one hole so um, it's just it's stupidly simple like um, just a few other, a few things I didn't talk about um, about the exhaust I know like that uh, we're not supposed to restrict the exhaust or put bends in it like and we're basically given this piece of pipe that comes with it so the length of that um, the amount of bends you get into it is probably calculated and written into the the ROMs of this yoke on how to operate so we don't want to fuck with that so what we're doing to make sure that we're not really interfering with this is the diameter of that pipe is a lot smaller than the exhaust pipe so we're going from that diameter to a bigger diameter that gives the gas a chance to expand, slow down a bit do its job more inside the heat exchanger and uh, I was thinking about thermodynamics of trying to cool that red hot inner core element with the hot air cold air would be far more efficient at transferring the energy from the hot steel into the cold air because you also have to consider the amount of time it takes for the air to flow through this like when this is on full speed I mean I don't have a wind velocity meter, I, I wish I had one now wind speed tester you know you see those jokes like a little windmill with a digital display on it but try and guess how long it takes the air to get from here through that and out there like a fraction of a second and that's the time that hot air has to pick up more heat from that to go out there so obviously um, when you're blowing air through it you have a very short amount of time to transfer the energy from the hot core to the heat so you want the best medium possible which is cold air compared to hot air so that's what we're going to do, we're going to fire it up again this time we're just going to put a fan on this and we're just going to measure how much heat we get out and to achieve this I went to the local scrapyard again and got myself a leaf blower which uh, does the job so I'm going to strap that on, we're going to start it up and see what happens so this is our um, jerry rigged update, high tech engineering yet again uh, comprising a one leaf blower one stretchy cable with two hooks very highly engineered piece of wood sitting on an 80 degree barrel what we want to do is just get this thing going and see how much hot air we get out of here to get a proper reading over the efficiency of the whole thing and the improved performance I'm going to have to get one of those um, wind velocity meters you know to measure the airflow because you can calculate the volume like so uh, maybe it's even written on that but let's fire it up and see what we get rearrange the chair a bit we didn't want to put another hole through the chair starting up I think uh, order the pump off yeah we can hear ignition I forgot that the pipe is in the heat exchanger so it sounds different oh there's something to watch look fuel pipe touching that fucking exhaust not a good idea. So those will stick the air guy. No, oh, you missed it. Yeah. The air guy. Oh, that didn't fucking work. Have to upset the whole thing there because we didn't want him touching off him. But nice gap in there now, so. Yeah, he's starting up nicely. Yeah, I'm getting a few 
fumes coming out. Cold, cold, cold. Oh, hot, hot. Yeah, starting up nicely now. Same setup as before. I can't believe how stupid it was not to figure that out the first time around. Like, I mean, why, why try to make warm air hotter? That seems a lot harder than making cold air hotter. Nice smooth sound coming out of it now. Oh. Starting to feel a bit of heat now. I've just turned off for now. I just want this thing to uh, heat up. I'll take some readings from the inner core element, the inner core pipe. See if we get that up to 100 degrees and then we'll switch it on and see what the fuck comes out there. <laughs> but if that's anything up around 50, 60 degrees, plus that, we'll be doubling the efficiency of this pump with this idea. Like, because at the end of the day, Airflow equals volume, and the more airflow, the more volume the, heat, the process is going to heat your house. Yeah, it's picking up heat now. So just wait for another few minutes, and let's start taking some readings. Right, lads, we've had a run in now about 10 minutes, and uh, lovely hot air coming out of that, as always. Let's see what we got down here. That's in it. 100. 100? 31. 70. Back later. 70. Let's go and take some readings. Uh, 20. 40. That's not, it's definitely not as hot, but yeah, we had that last time, remember, because we didn't have the air going through. So yeah, this doesn't actually get hot when there's no air, because it's, it's a, it's, it's this central core element where all the heat is. I know that is that. Uh, I don't believe that for a second, but this. No, not hot. So all the heat's in the middle. So let's measure the core from the inside like we did before. There's no air coming out, so we can go right in. 70. So we'll call that, oh sorry, you can see that? 60. 70, yeah. so we say we got 70 core temperature and it's up to heat. Uh, the exhaust we're getting 130, 140, same as before. Here we're getting 80, 60, but it, you can still touch it, like, I mean, it's warm there, yeah. That's just uh, it's slowly conducting the heat from there up to here, I suppose. So what we're going to do now is switch on our blower and this is going to throw a lot of hot air we hope and I assume it's going to start off really hot and then it's going to start cooling down and then all this is going to get hot so it's going to be taking the energy from the core element, heating the air and then dispersing the air onto the steel on the outside so it's, it's going to reduce the efficiency until I insulate this whole thing. So let's see, let's plug this guy in and see what we get. Okay. Oh, I got this held on with a little cord, so I hope it'll stay there. Oh, fuck, that's tight. Oh, hey. So we got hot air out of that. Let's see what we got from the other side. Oh, we got nice warm air there. Temperature. So now let's see what we got there. Remember. That's giving us 37. And this is giving us 29 up to 30. So we'll just leave it on for a few minutes to see what we get. The core is about 50, 60. If we can get this air up to 60, because whatever heat is coming out of this now is pure 100% taken from the exhaust and having no bearing on the efficiency of this. Any heat that comes out of this is just a bonus. Although it's not as warm, I can feel it um, cooling down, I'd say. 
40 degrees is nice. Still at 60 in the middle and like there's a hell of a breeze coming out here. I'm using a leaf floor, which is uh, obviously way too loud. And it's blowing too much air, but that's warm air like. on slow speed but that that fan is displacing a lot of air I saw that one to be honest but what I've just found is that on, on this leaf floor there's a little valve here to divert the blown air out that way or that way so I can that, that's full that's zero it's all coming out here now stuck in, in blow out so I can control the velocity, the air volume, with this guy. about 10 minutes like this and I have all the airflow from the pump going through it no hot air coming out of the diesel heater as you expect this is totally reclaimed heat and uh, what we're getting is a nice volume of air and it's up around 30 degrees 29 30 and like that is that is warm air like in the middle of winter, I'd like that to be blown into my house, no bother. That is warm air. And all that air is 100% reclaimed energy. Simply off the exhaust. So this is definitely the way to go. And what you end up is you've got hot air coming out of that, hot air coming out of that, all from the same amount of fuel as running that on its own. 
So we're at 30 degrees now. Well, 36 down there, 35. I threw on the high engineering blanket to, um, you know, <laughs> give it a fair test, like, try to keep as much of that energy as possible to get it out this sport. But Jesus, yeah, 36. And like, that's a fair volume of air. I've no way to demonstrate the airflow. So, we go with, um, you can, you, can, you can gauge there what kind of airflow we have. And uh, that's a big pipe, like, you can see the diameter of it, like. I mean, that's my hand, you can't see. That's my middle, that's my index finger. It's a big pipe, like, and that's, that's a nice bit of airflow. Obviously, like, that pump won't do too much noise. It's just something to grab to just try and test the idea, but that is definitely warm air and a lot of it. 36, 37, 31, 26 on the edge, but like, I mean, if you go in there where the heat is, like, I mean, this pipe is going to be inside the wall, fully insulated. Okay? And again, insulation is the key to this. Keep the energy where you need it all the way up to the point where it enters the house. And that is that is a nice warm breeze, purely off the exhaust. So yeah, two final readings, 37. Going in into the core we have 40, 47. Fuck that's hot. Let's see if we can uh, get any readings out of this. 30, so I don't get this at all. 40, 50, but. Now that's hot. About there, like, I mean, how close can I hold my hand to the exhaust port? Not much closer than that. Ow. We're looking at 30, 35 degrees, 37 degrees, like that. that's what's coming out, just purely on the exhaust. And I'm losing a lot of energy from there to there. So let's turn it off and have a little think about it. 37, what temperature are we getting here? Um, I have the exhaust shoved in a bit more this time. Maybe that wasn't such a good idea, that can have an insider inside, but 37 there. One last thing to do now is to put it down on, on minimum. wait a few minutes to see what it drops by but we're averaging 35 degree heat coming out of this which is 100% regained energy like reclaimed energy from the exhaust it's brilliant I'd uh, guess because this is almost twice the diameter of that of this hole and that's really slow now like because it's, it's turned down but there's definitely more volume air coming out of here than, than it's coming out of there. And I put it that a heat exchanger like this one on the exhaust will double the efficiency of these heaters. So we'll give it 10 minutes to just settle into that temperature, take some readings and then we'll draw some conclusions. I just turned off the pump there because of the noise or um, the, the air blower because the noise it was making. Don't even know if you picked out my voice on all the recordings so far. But now that I have the diesel heater down on minimum, H1, and I'm putting my hand up there, yeah, lovely warm air, but the volume of air, because the, the whole thing about these diesel heaters is the volume of air. Like, yeah, you can have red hot air, but it's how much of it is entering your home? Um, this thing is definitely going to double the volume of air entering the home. Now, this is warm, because it's coming straight off the heat sink, and this is giving us a reading of what? 40, 37, 
The heat sink itself is reading. Geez, look at that, 90. You see that? The aluminium heat sink, you don't want to touch that. Jesus, like that, that is hot. But that's, um, that's the core element to this, like, and this pipe is the core element to my heat exchanger. But in terms of volume, there's not much air coming out of this, you know? And we were heating our kitchen all last winter on this, with just that little volume of air, because as I said before, we run it on high for a few minutes, heat up the place, and then we put it down to minimum. And that's what that's what's coming in through the wall, like. Nice hot air, but uh, oh, you can see it there. Look, 36, 38. But that air definitely felt warmer than what was coming out of that uh, coming out of the heat exchanger. But the heat exchanger, nonetheless, is still warm. But anyhow, we've put it down to minimum. Heat exchanger should be getting cooling down a little bit. <sighs> 32, 38, 43. Oh, I can definitely hold my hand closer now, look. I mean, look at that, look, I can hold my hand there. Couldn't do that on full power. So, um, yeah, we'll give it a few minutes ticking over on minimum settings and we'll start that fan back up and see what we get out. Because the whole key to this is to run it on minimum. The heat sink of the diesel heater is now down to 50. It was 90 a minute ago. Thirty-four, seventy-two. Look at that now. I'm getting a reading of seventy-nine up here, up close. Go back a bit. Get a reading from here, <coughs> and I'm getting a reading of forty-eight. That's not much use, is it? These things aren't fucking accurate at all, boy. So I'd assume that one foot away you have to be to take a measurement. And like here we're getting. Yeah, see it's 60 now. Okay, here we are, it's about another 10 minutes later. Uh, I just left it on, it's still on low. But I'm shocked, like, because I, I never really measured the, vol the volume of air, but that's a nice uh, little breeze coming out there. Anyway, it's running on low, so the core element of that of the heat exchanger is lower. Let's we'll switch on our leaf lower and see what kind of temperature we're getting out of it now. That is on. What? Oh, there we go. Okay. That'll, that'll give you an idea of the volume of air coming out there, like. Right? Oh, we're down 10 degrees. 22. We'll give it a few minutes. But well, that's obviously the same volume of hair we had before, so we definitely have to knock that back a bit. Not throttle it back by just adjusting this. See the leaf? So off, 50. Drop it down, drop it down. Twenty-five, twenty-six. Give that a few minutes because it was off. Yeah, you can. I, I can definitely hold my hand a lot closer. I can actually hold that now. Wow, it is hot like, but I can hold it. That's the first time I've ever held this. So, he's putting out minimum energy, minimum exhaust. I can grab that. But that is warm. I'll put 
probably drop the airflow by half. Now we're in the middle of summer here in Ireland. It's pretty warm out today. It doesn't feel too warm what's coming out, but I guarantee if there's snow on the ground, that would feel like a furnace to you. So. Twenty seven, twenty six. And like I said, I don't have an airflow meter, but just guessing based on the diameter of that and the, the pressure of air I can feel on my hand coming out of it, there is definitely more airflow coming out of here. Bigger pipe, bigger diameter. Must be the same feeling of air pressure hitting my hand. And I'm pretty sure that that's, like anything coming out that pipe is 100% improvement like, it's, it's all improvement like. So, pretty happy with this. Yeah, I can grab that now. And I can put my hand right up to the exhaust pipe now. I wouldn't grab that, but the difference in temperature from here down to here is all coming out here. Have a few things about it. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. Let's shut this guy down. It's one. So it's pretty interesting. This is mad the way this thing works. I mean, the flame goes out straight away, and the fan stops. I mean, like that fan is up to stop and. Look at the temperature of this thing. 69, bring it up close. 65, 74, 77. What kind of design is this like? I mean, the fan literally stops when you turn it off. Waits a few minutes and then it comes back on again. Now I'm losing a lot of energy because of the uninsulated pipes. The uninsulated everything. There's the fan coming up now, like. Like we're getting nice air coming out of it. I mean it wasn't red hot, but it was definitely warm. You know? And now I'm thinking, should we use this as a preheat going into it? Or just just keep it at like that, it's totally separate. I'd say that the best thing to do is just, as we said several times, leave this as a completely, to, to just leave this functioning as it's meant to. And we just work with the exhaust, we'll just use the energy in the exhaust. That's all we work with. Because any kind of restrictions, any blockages in this, will totally fuck it up. So now I'm looking at rebuilding it, or just rebuilding it, Jesus, two things. And, um... What we don't want, see, see the exhaust goes down and then back up. We don't want that, we don't want that dip, we want it coming down. Like we want the exhaust to be going down and constantly going down. So... What I think now is to take off the heater, the, the, the heater re, re, remount this perpendicular to this. Exhaust then straight down, straight in. This straight into the house. Flip this guy the other around. Oh, I can't because it designed to go that way. And uh, yeah, we'll just have to have a think about it now and change things around. So yeah.
definitely um, we gained a lot of energy out of it. But the main thing was the airflow coming out of here. It was a hell of a lot of air and it was up to what was it, 25 degrees, 30 degrees? Yeah. Now that fan is obviously way too loud. There's a the, 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 there's many kind of fans you can get. You want a quiet fan, so you want a big fan. High volume, low velocity, low noise. Um, you get these big plastic 12 volt fans on computers, on the doors. You know the thing is about like eight inch diameter. You know they turn slow, but they move a lot of volume of air. It's something like that you want because this being mounted at the back of my house with neighbors left and right, I don't want to be upsetting the neighbors. Another thing too regarding noise coming out of the exhaust, very easy control noise. Like you know, I mean, on the end of this is going to be a you know pipe going up with another bend on the top. Just put a muffler on that. You won't like. But by the time I finish with this, you won't hear a sound. All you're going to hear is a secondary 12 volt fan and this all then box into some unit like that, and uh, you won't hear it. So now that's where we are. Yeah, can't believe I didn't um, come up with that the first time, it was so obvious, like, you know. 